So some are saying that Bitcoin is another serious safe haven asset with gold. Do you see that as possible? It is a groundbreaking space to create and exchange a new form of value. As cryptocurrency started to take off in Australia, digital entrepreneurs took to old media to sell new ways to get rich. Hi, I'm Sam Lee, founder and CEO of Blockchain Global. It is very exciting. The cryptocurrencies market has enormous opportunities. One should enter this market as quickly as possible. Sam Lee co-funded a cryptocurrency exchange based in Melbourne. The platform allowed investors to buy and sell digital currencies. But in late 2019, customers lost access to their funds. Total claims we've received as liquidator so far just in excess of $50 million. About half of those monies relate to the claims of individual uh, investors. There's certainly likely to be more claims that have coming that will come to the fore in the future. People who have, who have lost tens of thousands of dollars. These, these aren't uh, big corporations losing money. These are mum and dad investors who really hedge their bets on cryptocurrency. Blockchain Global promoted itself as the nation's biggest cryptocurrency exchange before its spectacular fall from grace. I was talking about it to a, uh, a colleague at work and then he told me that um, he had been purchasing some Bitcoin through ACX. So I went to the website and I created an account for myself. Bruno Farb was an experienced investor with some spare cash when he found out about cryptocurrency and Blockchain Global's ACX exchange. Did you think your money was safe? There was a page that showed the terms of use and everything else, and it, if you read through it, it says that all customers' funds are, you know, kept separately and they don't touch them and they, you know, they're all protected and all those sort of things. For more than two years, Bruno made thousands of trades on the platform. It operated the way it was supposed to operate. So, yeah, I didn't suspect anything until this, this time when things stopped. Bruno noticed his account was frozen in early 2020. He estimates Blockchain Global owes him $100,000. It stayed like that for more than two weeks. Then I started to get worried and started to panic. He's still trying to get his money back and is part of a group of 135 Blockchain Global customers, pursuing the company and three of its key players. Unlike parking your money in a bank, there is no government guarantee for deposits in cryptocurrency exchanges. How would you describe the way that the, the regulators and um, authorities have handled this situation? Um... Well, they did nothing. <laughs> it's, um, they, everyone was, I guess, pointing the finger, saying it's ASIC. Everyone was trying to say it's somebody else's job, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Blockchain Global was the brainchild of three businessmen, Liang Alan Go, Sam Lee and Zijing Ryan Xu. Melbourne lawyer Christos Stathopoulos is trying to get the money of investors back through the courts in a civil claim. The funds of the users weren't sitting in a platform in a pool and being held in trust like they should have. They were being used for other investment schemes, arbitrage, uh, potential misappropriations. And once the user starts pulling out their crypto and there's nothing left in the bank to do as such, uh, then it got to a point where there was just nothing left in the kitty to give to the user. Liquidator Andrew Yo and his team were appointed in October 2021, when the company went into voluntary administration. They've been trying to find the missing millions. What we have been able to ascertain is that those funds were mixed uh, with other company funds and used for a, a series of other purposes. What were some of those purposes? It was quite a number. Um, they included things like initial coin offerings, um, other startup businesses, a number of which uh, ultimately failed and the investments were lost. Hundreds of bitcoins. Liquidators have uncovered a complex network of transactions in their investigations. 
They've been able to identify where some of the money ended up, but can't access it. Alan Goh claims to have lost his laptop with passcodes to access $5 million worth of cryptocurrency. One of those holdings um, is in a particular cryptocurrency wallet and the password or one of the passwords to that wallet was apparently retained on a laptop. The laptop was apparently lost on a travelling journey to China. Uh, obviously the nature of crypto means that once that password is lost, if it's not able to be recovered, then the holding of the cryptocurrency is not able to be accessed from that wallet. The liquidator has reported the three co-founders of the blockchain global exchange to ASIC for potential breaches of the Corporations Act. ASIC says it will consider any new evidence provided. 7.30 has contacted Mr Go and Mr Shu, but has had no response. In a WhatsApp message to 7.30, Sam Lee says he resigned as a director before the Blockchain Global Exchange accounts were suspended. He returned to the company in April 2020. He says he has not made any decisions as a director to result in a breach of the Corporations Act. Since Blockchain Global's collapse, Lee and Shu have been involved in a failed multi-level marketing scheme known as Hyperverse. Lee's also been involved with Vidilux, which collapsed only last month. In videos posted on YouTube, he said he's not to blame. So for those who are now asking me, OK, do the withdrawals on Vidilux. Just let everyone have their money. Firstly, let's be clear. How do I do that? How do I do that with this? And you know what? Business first, charity second. Business first, charity second. I need to be a good businessman, make the money that I make. And then, of course, give back to the community. Why do I have people around me? That's because even when everything goes wrong, things still go right for me. Because it's always someone else's fault. Let's be clear. From a legal standpoint, it's always someone else's fault. You expect a company that's operating in Australia, that's registered with ASIC, um, that's supposed to follow the, the laws of running a business, that there would be some protection there. Bruno Farb is still hopeful investors will get their money back. And despite Blockchain Global's collapse, he hasn't lost faith in cryptocurrency. What would you do with that money if you could get it back? Um, I just reinvested in the, the crypto assets that I lost because I'm a, a believer in cryptocurrency and I think it's a good investment and I've, uh, that's what I would do with it, yeah. <laughs>